Hello everybody and welcome to beautiful, adventurous, expansive Sagittarius season. What a great way to start the year. It really is a really um, forward looking, really open view energy. So I think it's wonderful for a brand new year. And um, we're right in the middle of Sagittarius season at the moment. So please do be aware that I'm working with true sidereal astrology. And basically what that means is it's considering astrology from the placement of the stars. So where they are actually right now in the current time. And um, it's quite different timing from tropical western astrology which I will talk about a little bit later um, in regards to Sagittarius in particular but um, if you'd like to find out um, a lot more about sidereal astrology then I will have a link in the notes for you to hop on over to my website where you can get an explanation of all of that but to me it makes much more sense because it is astrology that is matched with astronomy. So we're talking about how the stars and planets have an effect on us and that can only be true if we're talking about where they are right now. Anyway, let's get into Sidereal Sagittarius. So the dates for Sidereal Sagittarius uh, for this year, for this Sagittarius season, so it's not actually this year because it's last year and this year, uh, from December 20th, 2021 through to January 21st, 2022. Now, be aware as well that I am currently based in Melbourne, Australia. And what that means is that because of the differences in time, the dateline may be um, in changing those dates for you. So in fact, when the sun moved into Sagittarius for us here uh, in Australia, that time may actually still have been the 19th of December if you're somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere. So just being aware of that. So it's kind of 19th slash 20th of December through to 20th slash 21st of January is when the sun is actually rising in Sagittarius, in the constellation of Sagittarius. Now, if you do have a look into sidereal astrology in my information or elsewhere, you will also see that these dates are not set in stone. So this is the beauty of sidereal astrology is it recognizes the tilt of the earth and what is called precession, which means that our view of the stars actually changes a little bit over time. So over 72 years, we're going to, our view is going to change by one degree. So that would mean that Sagittarius season will move by about a day in that time. Um, so the dates for tropical Western astrology, which is the most common form of astrology that most people are aware of, um, place Sagittarius from the 22nd of November through to the 21st of December. So quite different. We've only got a couple of days of overlap um, between the sidereal dates and the tropical Western dates. Now that, and that can mean that if you have thought of yourself as being a Sagittarius, because you thought that your sun sign was Sagittarius, uh, and you've actually just listened to this and found out that it's not, that can be quite confronting for some people. But I would say that if you feel really attached to your Sagittarius personality, if you're freedom loving, you like to party, you like to explore, you like to adventure, you are um, kind of liking to see everybody having freedom and you know it's a, it's a really expansive energy with Sagittarius. If that feels like you then it's quite possibly because you actually do have a strong Sagittarian energy in your chart even though your sun may not be in Sagittarius. So you may have a moon, you may have a rising, you may have a uh, stellium, what we call a stellium which is two or more planets in Sagittarius. So that energy is still going to be big for you. Um, the best way to check all of that is obviously to do a reading and that is something that I can help you with and again there'll be a link for you to be able to book if you would like to do that. 
So who really needs to be aware of this information that I'm going to share with you? Well, definitely people who are born between those dates. And I would go back also with the start of the season by a day back to December the 19th for this year in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, because if somebody is quite old, it may be that in fact, when they were born, their um, son did rise in Sagittarius, even though they were born on the 19th rather than the 20th. Now, I have a friend myself who is the same age as me, who um, that was her birthday, um, and she is still a Sagittarius, even though um, she was born on the 19th of December, nearly 50 years ago. So, um, so definitely between those dates, this is going to mean you are a sun sign Sagittarius. And as I just um, explained before, you see yourself as an, a Sagittarius, you identify as Sagittarius. So ad adventurous, open-minded, positive as three of the key words for Sagittarians. If you know your astrology chart and you know that you have a moon or a rising, Sagittarius rising or Sagittarius ascendant as we call it, then again this information is going to be really pertinent because that Sagittarius energy is really going to affect your health and well-being. If your moon is in Sagittarius, that means you need to feel Sagittarian qualities for your emotional well-being. So you need to feel that you're well liked. You need to see justice for all. And you also need to always maintain your own sense of freedom. If your ascendant or rising sign is Sagittarius, this means that this is the sign that was on the eastern horizon when you were born. And it's what you're becoming or what you're developing through this lifetime. You're working towards a broad-based philosophical approach to and trust in life. So lastly, if you again know your astrological chart and you can see that you've got a number of um, planets uh, or sorry, if you've got Sagittarius anywhere in your sixth house um, and regardless of whether you have planets in it. But if you have Sagittarius in your sixth house, especially if it's on the cusp of your sixth house, then that means that this is the sixth house is our house of health and well-being. And that means that you're definitely going to have some Sagittarian um, propensity for Sagittarian uh, illnesses for um, the parts of the body that Sagittarius rules to be injured or suffer uh, from ill health in your life. So this information will be really pertinent for you. I'm just going to turn my phone off, which I should have done before. Okay, so also, of course, if you know someone who is any of those things, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon or Rising, um, especially if you've got a close relationship with them, if you're their parent or their child or sibling or close friend, partner, even a work relationship, it can be really useful to understand this information. So Sagittarius is the last of the three fire signs in the zodiac and it is a mutable fire sign. So that means it's that changeability. There's a lot of changeability because Sagittarius is always searching for that wisdom and always looking outside, looking further. It's really like you think of the arrow of Sagittarius. It gets shot off out into the distance to travel a long way to find something that is far from it and that it may not know already. So um, it's quite a restless, constantly moving energy. It's been transformed through the depths of Scorpio and a fucus seasons, which we've passed through. And I do have my information on those, which you'll be able to find on the same channel wherever you're seeing this. But now it's reaching up and out the energy, seeking widely for experiences to create the wisdom it needs for fulfillment. If you want any reminders about the fire element in the zodiac, then I'd suggest you go back to the piece about Aries to read all about fire. And all the fire signs certainly have a lot in common. Um, so it's very valid to look at that. With Aries, the fire energy was all about initiative and action. Then the second fire sign was Leo, which is about creation and expression. And then now with Sagittarius, we have that fire 
require of exploration and of expanding horizons. In the wheel of the year, um, we move through all the seasons and all throughout the zodiac. So there's a wheel of the year, which is the zodiac wheel as well. Tropical Western astrology continues to make an association between the seasons and the zodiac. Um, it really doesn't particularly apply to sidereal zodiac to sidereal astrology because we're not basing our view of astrology on the seasons, which Tropical Western really does. It says that the first day of Aries is the start of spring in the Northern Hemisphere or autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. And that's where everything's locked in. Whereas we are basing what we say on where the stars and planets actually are. So in um, Tropical Western Astrology, Sagittarius is in late autumn, early winter. In Sidereal Astrology, it's early winter in the Northern Hemisphere, early summer in the Southern Hemisphere. And, you know, I can see the um, relationship with that fire element into, into those seasons. So the hot fire of some re-weather um, or the hot fire that we need to get through the cold of winter. And the travel vibe of Sagittarius as well, I think, applies to this season. So here in the Southern Hemisphere, everybody's off and away uh, exploring and enjoying their summer holidays. And in winter, right at the time of Sagittarius, we have the, the festive season in, uh, in the West. And that is a time when many people travel as well. They travel to be with loved ones to celebrate that time of year. So, yep, sure, I'm stretching the limits of bringing in those relationships of the season, but, you know, I think you can always make it work. So Sagittarius is ruled by the planet Jupiter, which is a big, ever-expanding, gaseous planet. Um, and we can really feel that quality, that ever-expanding quality with Sagittarius, with its sense of possibility and also idealism. The sign, uh, sorry, the symbol of Sagittarius is the archer, of course. And really the main feature of that is, as I said before, the, that arrow that goes out and into the distance. Um, so sometimes, yeah, that, that arrow really will travel long distances into, into the great unknown. And that is the energy of Jupiter and of Sagittarius. In astrology, your chart is divided into 12 houses, which refer to 12 different areas of life. And if a planet or a sign is in a house, that gives us some information about how we're going to experience that part of our life. Each of the signs rules one of the houses and Sagittarius is the ninth sign. So it rules the ninth house. Uh, the ninth house is all about expansion, funnily enough. So its focus is on higher learning. Now that can be learning that takes place just in the school of life. So especially things like travel and experiencing other cultures, but, but anything in life we learn from. But also formal higher education sits in this house as well, including spirituality, religion, philosophy, and just general wisdom sit here. The ninth house is also where we find long journeys. So if you want to see uh, when you might be traveling, then it'll be when there's a transit to your ninth house. And those long journeys can be metaphysical journeys, not necessarily physical journeys, uh, but definitely foreign travel. So you may remember that we talked about Gemini and the third house being about local travel, short, short distances is, is that energy, but Sagittarius is our long distances. So each sign of the zodiac also rules different parts of the body, as I alluded to before, and all fire types, um, uh, sorry, the other aspect of that is that all um, signs have a particular body type associated with them, which is based on the element. So with the fire types, so Sagittarius, Leo and Aries, they all generally have a an athletic, a strong body type. Now, remembering that this can often come into play more from the sign that is on your ascendant. So if you're a sun sign Sagittarius, that may not be true of you. 
Um, and also it can be more the more dominant energy in your chart so if you've got a lot of fire then that may be more what you look like whereas if you've got a Sagittarius Sun but in fact your dominant element is Earth then you won't have that particular body type most likely However, we think of Jupiter and how it's ever expanding with the gases <laughs> surrounding it and Sagittarius can be the same. So it can tend to be quite lean and wiry and really, you know, fit looking in early years, but then can expand a bit more in later years, become a bit rounder. Sagittarians generally do have great vitality so all the fire signs do they generally live long lives but because they're so exploratory and can tend to be risk taking there is also that that comes into play so if they may take a risk that ends their life early I'm not saying that is what's going to happen but Sagittarians are very prone to accident and injury because they're they've got that always on the go um, going out there into things they haven't experienced before energy um, so from an eastern medical point of view Sagittarius energy um, or constitution is hot and dry Sagittarians do tend to have a positive outlook so on the rare occasions when they do become unwell really they just need sort of nurturing and a bit of encouragement from whoever is looking after them including practitioners and they'll tend to recover quickly. So body parts that are ruled by Sagittarius the thighs, the hips, the buttocks, the sacrum, the coccyx, the pelvis so think all about that that lower the top of the lower limbs and everything that helps you in locomotion because that is what Sagittarius is about. I find it quite easy to remember those things that Sagittarius rules because I just think of that image of Sagittarius as the um, half man half horse and you know you think about the huge big horses legs those muscles that is that Sagittarian area. So muscle coordination is generally ruled by Sagittarius um, so not just for those lower limbs. The sciatic nerve, the liver and the pancreas come in to Sagittarian rulership as well and the autonomic nervous system so that rest and digest nervous system. Sagittarians are always on the go so they need to bring in the balance of the rest as well. So what this means with these areas of the body um, is that Sagittarius can tend towards ailments in those parts of the body, injuries and illnesses that affect those parts of the body. As I said before, accidents due to their very reckless nature and their love of speed, falls, bites, cuts and stings. So a lot of those sort of sudden things that may occur because you're being a bit careless uh, in Sagittarius. Blood sugar dysregulation so that rulership of the pancreas comes in there so blood sugar imbalance can be a Sagittarian thing. Burnout and nervous system exhaustion and also gout. So of course I always love to think about the chakras, the energy centers in relationship to everything I do and with Sagittarius I feel that it has the energy of Sagittarius has a strong connection to the fourth energy center, the love or the heart chakra, and also to the seventh energy center, the connection energy or also known as the crown chakra. So the love energy allows us to be open, to be expansive, which is what Sagittarius is doing all the time and the connection energy gives us a big sense of connection with everything outside of ourselves so really we've gone through that looking at ourselves internally that that real deep dive into ourselves through the Scorpio and a few seasons and now we're coming up and out with Sagittarius. Let's have a look at some approaches to health and well-being that can help people with that big Sagittarian energy to take a preventative approach to life, to their health. Sagittarians have difficulty sitting still so the first thing I talk about is movement. It's probably not something that's a big issue for Sagittarians, they will be moving. Um, 
bringing in new different types of movement is important for them um, so not just doing the same thing so especially I would suggest um, if you know you're using a lot of that athletic energy in that kind of movement enterprise perhaps think about some yoga or some Pilates to really stretch and open up the hip joints um, Sagittarians definitely can be really good athletes I do have a Sagittarian son who is a great athlete and uh, you know that is what he wants to do with his life but they can get really clumsy when they're tired or their nervous system um, is frayed as well and that is so true of my son um, Sagittarius generally love riding things so think you know bikes horses even um, jet skis um, so that is a type of movement that may be something they really enjoy Let's talk about sleep. So with that um, potential for burnout, big potential for burnout with Sagittarians, sleep is super important. Doing lots of physical activity, which is what they're naturally inclined to do, is going to help them to fall asleep. Um, they really do need to make sure they prioritize it so that they're getting enough deep sleep to balance their nervous system and to allow the brain to cleanse and heal itself overnight. My third category of even star five well be five star well being is just called being. So it's everything else. Um, slow down is obviously the number one for Sagittarius. Get into nature. Just breathe. Focus on the breath. So some breath focus meditation would be really good. Energy healing, great for everyone, but especially when you do have that overstimulated nervous system. So things like Reiki, kinesiology, acupuncture. You can definitely book in with me for a Reiki session wherever you are in the world. I do remote Reiki, so I'd love to help that out, help you out with that, Sagittarians. There is a bark flower that is really useful for balancing Sagittarian energy, which is agrimony. There are others, and depending on what you're wanting to manage, I would recommend different ones. So please get in touch if you'd like to get some advice on that. Then what about food? Sagittarians do love to eat and being a bit like horses, it's great to feed them grains, greens and grasses. So lots of fruits and vegetables. Did you know that you should have seven to 10 cups of fruits and vegetables, well, especially vegetables every day? That is a lot of vegetables. Uh, so especially for Sagittarius, parsnip, asparagus, cucumber, strawberries, onions, figs, cabbage, cherries are all really good ones. So a lot of those in season here in the Southern Hemisphere right now. Grains, so pretty much all of them, but especially rice, oats, barley, rye and wheat. Um, look, it's true for everyone that I would say, you know, avoid excess in sugar, alcohol and drugs, but especially for Sagittarius, they do tend to overindulge. It's, you know, that big expansive energy again, um, and they need to really be aware of that, especially because restrictive diets aren't going to work with Sagittarian energy. So remember, we're talking about this freedom loving thing. So trying to restrict Sagittarius in anything is not going to work. So therefore, they really need to maintain a consistent level of moderation, especially in gourmet foods as well. Um, silica is the mineral that Sagittarians tend to be quite depleted in. They, they burn through the silica a lot. So replacing that with lots of silica rich foods, which is the same as a lot of the ones that I've already mentioned. So I'll just run through them again. Oats, rye, rice, figs, strawberries, prunes, parsnips, cherries, and all fruit and vegetable skins, pretty much all of them. Are good so don't don't peel peel stuff people wash your fruit and vegetable and eat the whole thing rather than removing the peel herbs that are great for Sagittarius to eat horseradish artichoke celery dandelion and wild yam there are also some herbs that are great for Sagittarius to use as teas and that includes nettle dandelion and St John's wort so they're all things that are going to help you kind of wind down a little bit and then some essential oils that I picked out for Sagittarius. So they're really oils that support that Sagittarian energy. So they're not sort of balancing it by bringing other things in there. Sagittarian energy oils. 
um, and they are Helichrysum, Siberian fir, star anise and Lang Lang. Now if you want to know why I'm suggesting them then hop on over to the blog and there'll be a bit more information there for you on those oils. I really hope that you make the most of Sagittarius season for this year. Be well.